Hi everyone. Today I'm back at the Christmas subjects. So I've got my mead and watercolor paper here. You can also use your Artisto, but I wanted to play with this block of paper. And uh, a lot of you asked me about 100% cotton. I normally would not paint on this um, daily because it's a little bit more expensive, but I was gifted this one, um, a, a couple blocks, so I'm using them, but please, please uh, trust that your uh, Artisto pads are just as good, I think. And um, with that, let's go ahead and get going. I will link this for you. Again, this is the 100% Meaden watercolor paper. It is a block for you newbies. What that means is it's sealed on all sides. And if you're like me and you like to work with a lot of water, this is perfect because it holds all the edges down and you won't get that kind of wonky um, uh, warping. And look at that wonky brush. Wow, what happened? Huh. Anyway, um, I just did a video on taking care of your brushes and my own brush was all frayed out there. So anyway, supplies. I've got that meat in a paper that I love. It's full of texture. They ship all over the US, which is great for a lot of my uh, out of the uh, US. You can get this easily. I've got my meat in two wells. I'm obsessed with this brand right now, as you guys can see. Um, buying this for gifts for my grandkids. If you've ever had your water spill over because it's in, I used to use mason jars, it's a mess. And this just looks so nice. It's ceramic. I've got my wash and my rinse side. And then of course, uh, a lot of you asked me about this palette because it's a really nice big palette. Tons of wells, lots of mixing area, which for me, I like lots of mixing areas. And listen to this, it's nice quality ceramic, love it. Um, and today I will be using my, uh, my laying paints. Um, they're the paints I pretty much paint with daily because they're affordable, they're creamy, they're vibrant, I love them. They're made by Paul Rubens who is um, always quality and I've used them for years, the Paul Rubens line. And I've got my tissue. So let's get started. I will be using my favorite Velvet Touch Round 8 brush. I like it because it's this short handle and I just, you guys, I just love the feel of it. It's called the Velvet Touch and I love it. It's got really nice bristles. I can get a nice point and I can get kind of a wide stroke. So I'm going to be working a lot of wet in wet today, um, which is why I also wanted to use this um, meat and block paper. By the way, when I'm done, for those of you that don't know, um, all you do is you slide like a little knife or something in here. They actually gave me a little tool and I have misplaced it and you just slide it in there and around the edges and it loosens it all up. I was just looking for it. Um, and I don't know if that's something that comes with all of their papers or not, but uh, it's quite handy. You can also just uh, use a credit card and slip it in there and go around. Uh, so today I want to make my, um, my little snowman kind of vintagey. I love vintage. My home has a lot of vintage in it, um, flowers and colors. So that's kind of what I wanted to do today. And I think, although I will use the eight velvet touch, I think I'm also, I'm going to keep this handy, this 12 Princeton, uh, Princeton. And I may use that as well. So let's go ahead and get started. And I'm going to go in First, being that it's vintage, I want to use these kind of rich chocolatey browns um, of my My Lang palette. So I've got a burned brown, I've got Van Dyke brown, burnt sienna I'm going to be using. So some, <coughs> excuse me, I've had a cough. So this is that uh, burned brown. I really like that color. And then I'll probably use a lot of 
this type of color as well. Just such warm, cozy, wintry colors, right? And honestly, I think at the end, I will add on some of these fun, maybe, we'll see. Um, Mirror Series from Mob Watercolors. I love her. I'm not affiliated with her. She just asked me if she sent them to me and I liked them. Would I share them? And I've been using them and obsessed, you guys. You can't see here, but oh my gosh, these things, when I put them on paper, they just move. They move without me doing a thing. So much fun. So this middle one has some big flakes in it. I don't know if you can see that. And then this one is more like an all over shimmer. So I've been using those a lot, but you can use, if you've got the bigger My Lang palette, you can use their, um, I think it's called Royal Gold. They've got uh, some nice selections as well. So those will kind of be my color palettes. I'll also add in some orange, some orangey kind of um, sienna type colors for maybe his hat. And then of course my olive green, which I always, always love. That's always my favorite. So I think those are all really vintagey, nice colors for our little guy. All right, let's start on his hat. And what I'm gonna do first is, I'm gonna go in with kind of that deep, dark, chocolatey brown, and just start at the top here. I'm gonna even mix in a little bit of that burned brown. And let's just use the side of our brush, because I want kind of a wide, um, kind of a wide uh, brush stroke here. And actually, you know what, I'm gonna, let's start over. I think what I'm gonna do, this is what happens when you don't know how to edit, by the way. Let's start with our lightest color. That's the smart way to do this, guys. So let's go into our, um, this is Sienna. And we're just gonna do kind of a wash here, but leaving those white spaces. So I went in and I applied some of that brown, that sienna, but notice I'm leaving white space right here in the middle because I'm kind of assuming that's, now I got quite a bit of color there and that's okay. And using the side of my brush, so I'm keeping my, my brush tilted here. And I'm allowing all these paints to just mix and mingle and play on my paper. And then dabbing off my brush like that. So I'm getting lots of fun colors already. Now I wanna go in and grab a little bit my darker brown I had mixed, and I'm just gonna start adding that in along the edges like that. Again, using the side of my brush. So let's pick up a little bit, ooh, there we go. That is that um, burned brown. I really like it. It's a great color for um, kind of some shadows. And look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? This is the beauty of watercolors, friend. And let's see, let's go in and do his hat. We're gonna do the hat the same way. So I'm gonna start with that beautiful sienna color putting a little bit of oops putting a little bit of that in my palette if you can't see my palette here oops there we go just mixing it up but i'm keeping it somewhat of a light value so a little bit more water not meaning that what i'm picking up has more water it's just the ratio if that makes sense so i'm not picking up more water necessarily in my brush. It just means my paint is diluted a little bit more. And I'm gonna go in and just play with the brim of his hat again. I wanna leave those white spaces kind of in front there and getting my paintbrush a little bit wet. 
so it keeps that nice beautiful washy feel and there we go I'll go in with a little bit more of that chocolate brown which is the burned brown and just maybe touch in over here on the edges where there might be a little bit more of a shadow and while this is wet I'm just gonna let that blend and then wash and rinse my my brush I know this is kind of fast but when you're working with um, wet and wet sometimes you have to be a little bit fast now what I'm gonna try and do is I'm gonna use a little bit of that gold yellow ochre and I don't want too much but I do be careful because that yellow ochre can really be strong and powerful so I'm going to add in a tiny the tiniest bit of lemon yellow because lemon yellow won't go with our color palette but I want to get a little bit of that in and just add in a little bit here and there I think that's a really pretty color and it just gives that illusion of maybe some light there we go so this is still a little bit wet so if I wanted to go in there and add some more chocolate browns I definitely could something like that just some little hat marks because we want to give it the feeling he's got this really old vintagey hat on so much fun right there we go and I might even just tap in along the edges like that to really round out this is what's so much fun what I enjoy so much about um, not only watercolors but also um, wet and wet is getting these beautiful blends on my paper so really darkening that edge and there you go it gives that illusion that it's rounded so while that is drying let's go in and take maybe let's see let's play a little bit with our blues and I'm gonna pick up kind of that Prussian Prussian blue and I think oops got a little bit of water here I think it's gonna be what I want as kind of the shadowy colors for my my snowman I kind of like that um, I knew, might normally go a little bit brighter but because we're doing kind of a warmer color palette I'm gonna stick with that Prussian blue and look how perfect that will be for our highlights and things so let's go ahead we're gonna do a wash so I'm going to take some of that Prussian blue put it in my palette here if you can see my palette and I might even let it mix a little bit with my ultramarine blue but I want to add quite a bit of water to it so it's a it looks like a shadow because this is snow so it's just going to have that feel of a shadow and I'm gonna go right along the top of his face so holding my brush at a little bit of a diagonal but I'm really focusing on the tip here and if you ever want to see that's the exact color that's the value so that's about 75% water to 25% paint to get that light value and that's a perfect shadowy color so using the tip of my brush so light pressure and starting about here and then taking the side of my brush need a little bit more water there and bringing it around the side of his face like that now I've got something funky going on with my paper here hopefully you can't see that it's um I don't know I spilled something on there and I'm just gonna soften the edge now with shadows you can have a little bit of a harder edge but you know me and my hard edges I just kind of don't like those so I tend to pick those up 
but really with shadows you could have a little bit of that now my might just go in and maybe just add a tiny bit of Prussian blue to that um, brown and in the corner here maybe add that in just a little bit just a hint that there's some darkness there so I'm just barely tapping in and then we'll go in when we do the underneath of his hat kind of some darker browns um, we will do that we're also going to do his little buckle here which I'm going to try and find like a a warm red to do that in so there's the shadow and I kind of I, I quite like that I think I'll do a little under here as well so picking up some more of that paint and just going along his cute little scarf here like that and then I'm gonna soften that edge so I clean my brush and just go along the side there just go along that edge okay maybe a tiny bit along this edge but not as much because I want the feeling that the shadow is on that side go along with the damp brush there we go all right so I I pretty happy with that and that really it I feel like just shines the light right on his face now I might add just a touch of maybe a pinkish hue so a little orange and yellow but quite watered down that's really vibrant so I want to find yeah I want a little bit more orange in there than that to kind of go with this carrot nose. That's too light. So something like that, I think with the pink in there, it might be a little bit too cool and light. And then I'm just gonna give his cheeks a little rosy glow. Now I'm gonna go around the outer edge and soften that because I don't want a hard line. And then let's do that one more time. Where'd my orange go? Here we go. And just, so I can make a hard line, but then I wash and rinse my brush and I go around that outer edge and just soften it because this is snow, snow is soft. So I want it to look soft. Now his little coal eyes, as they say, right? Mm -hmm. We're gonna do those black. So I'm gonna just, I don't know if I need to show you that, but I'll put a little black in here. They're pretty black, guys. I might leave a little tiny bit of white in there. I wanna make sure this isn't wet so it doesn't feel cool to the touch. And I'm using a pretty dark value of that black. And I think I might even use my six because it's a little bit finer tip. So this is my six long round. And let's go into that black again. And yeah, I can get a much better tiny thin line. Let's pick up some more of that black. And just using light pressure, resting my hand, because I don't have a sturdy enough hand. Some of you might, but I don't. And go in and just create those cute little eyes. If your hand really is shaky and you're having a hard time with this, you can always use just a ballpoint pen. Of course, uh, making sure it's waterproof. So there's our little eyes. So cute, right? Okay. Now next, let's um, let's color in his scarf here. So I'm gonna rest this over here on my fancy, fancy little brush rest. And I'm going back to my eight brush now because I wanna color cover a little bit more area. And I wanna make his scarf to kind of match his hat. 
So we're going to go into that wash color again, which was the um, sienna color. And we're going to go in and just put kind of a glaze over his little scarf here. He's so cute, isn't he? I don't live in the snow. And at this time of year, I'm always kind of jealous because I'd love to build a snowman. Now I'm gonna have that song in my head, by the way. So I'm going in and I'm just softening some of these lines, trying to keep some of that white space. And these don't happen to be completely softened because I want it to look like creases. So I'm picking up a little bit more of that paint, gonna go over to the other side using the side of my brush, but yet if I tilt my brush up, it's gonna go from a wide stroke and as I tilt my brush up, I'm now using the point. There you go. Sometimes it's just those little things that really can help you. And we're just creating all these little folds in his little scarf. And then I'll go in and soften those. So I'm almost kind of lifting. I'm not quite completely covering up those white spots, but I'm definitely softening them. Now I'm gonna go in with my dark brown before it dries, and I'm gonna start adding in just some little creases. Again, this is my shadow edge and underneath his little chubby snow face. I'm gonna add in some darkness. So we really get that interest and feeling that it's curving around. And then I'll wash and tap off my brush and go in and again, just soften those edges because we want his scarf to look nice and cozy, right? Like that. Wash and rinse my brush. Soften those lines. We can always go back in and make them a little bit harder. I'm gonna pick up a tiny bit darker. So now I'm moving into this burned brown color and I'm gonna tap in there. Look at that, that is really some dark brown. But look at how it gives you that feeling that his scarf is turning around and we might even add a bit right here where it's all bunched up. And I'm doing this while it's wet because I want it to kind of blend. I don't really want hard lines with our snowman. So just softening those edges out like that. And I will keep a little bit, I think, of those hard lines. Let's go here. Now this is probably dried, so I'm not going to get as nice a blending as I did on the other side, but that's okay because we're just going to use some water and go in and kind of re-wet it. Now it was a little wet there. So wash and rinse my brush, tap it off so it's just damp. And now I'm going in and I'm just, with that damp brush, I'm just softening those edges. Softening those edges. Okay, yes, I'm repeating that because I even have to say that to myself, guys. So for those of you saying, oh my gosh, I wish you'd quit saying that, I do that for myself as well. There we go. So we're creating this feeling of turning and dimension. So wonderful. All right, let's let that, well, let's go in actually before that completely dries and I'm going to just grab some of that gold we made and it's pretty watered down and I'm gonna go in and again, use the side of my brush 
and just add in some of that gold. Isn't that pretty? Really gives it a pop, doesn't it? There we go. Okay, so look how far we've come already. Let's find a nice warm red here. So remembering on our color wheel, if the color is over in the warm side, any colors that, this is very simplified guys, but how I remember my warm and my cool is any colors that look like water or the ocean are gonna be your cool colors. Any colors that are reminiscent of the sun are gonna be your warmer colors. I know that's really simplified because those colors can have cool undertones, but for the sake of this, I'm gonna go into, let's see. So these colors are more, have more of a cool undertone. They're pinker reds. These are very warm reds. They have the colors of the sun. So I'm going to lean towards those because my vintage color palette is warmer. So I'm gonna stay away from these pinky reds which lean, have blue in them because blue and red are purples and pinks, right? So I'm gonna lean more towards my cad red, maybe vermilion, cad orange. So let's get some of that on our palette here. Let's see. Um, I really like that vermilion. Let's play with that a bit and see, see what that looks like. So I want a little bit redder we might even, that's a little bit better. Actually, that one is pretty good. That's the cad red. Let's just play with, I was kind of curious what the rose red might look like. That might be too pinky. I kind of like it, but I think this is kind of a traditional guy. So let's stick with our um, cad orange. Okay. Let's make sure, let me make sure I grab the right one. Oopsie, I didn't. The other day when I closed my My Lang palette, all my paints flew out. So I kind of had to put them back in and there's been just a couple that I kind of mixed up. All right, so it's this one here. Um, let's see, let me find some room on my palette. Yes, I need to wash my palette, guys. I know, I know. Okay, so I'm going into that red and I'm going to create a light wash. I can test it. Yep, that's the color I want. And I'm gonna go in and I'm just going to do a light wash over here, just like that. And now I'll start going in and adding in deeper, darker colors. So for that deeper color of this, I'm gonna add a little bit of brown to it and see what that gives me. Uh, let's see, pick up a little bit more of that, yeah. And I'm just going to let me make sure. I don't want it to be too dark. Actually, want it a little darker. Oop! Whoa! That Van Dyke brown is brown, you guys. Want it to have a little bit more orange. So pick up a little bit more of my orange. Yeah, I think that's good. Now I could. You can always add your opposite. So red and green would make a shadowy color, but I really wanna keep it in those brown undertones. So going in there, got a little too much water. There we go. Maybe over here. And I kinda of like that. I'm gonna leave that be for right now. Let's go ahead and go in and do the underside of his hat. So we wanna go a little bit darker than this. We wanna use that mid-range color. So again, I get out my palette. That's a little bit too dark. I wanna go a little bit lighter. Oop, that's the same one. 
that's got a little bit of red, but it might work. Let's see. Uh, I think I'll stick with that one. So let's get that in our palette here. And again, for the first layer, I'm adding some water and tap off if you think you have too much. And then I'm going to go in and start coloring the underside of his hat. Now I think it needs to be a little bit darker because what I'm noticing is it's blending in with the rim of his hat, which we can fix. We can go in and darken it once in layers, but I really like getting that. Ooh, too much water there. And this side, because this is my shadow side, is going to be really dark. This side will be a little bit lighter. So we want to go in and add a darker color in there. See if we can get that dark, dark brown. Yeah, I think that's good. And let's go in. I'm using the point and the side of my brush to go in so I use the point when I'm trying to get near the edges and then when I want to cover a larger area I'm going in with the side of my brush so using the point right now and it's going to gradually get lighter okay this can even be darker, so I might even go in with just add a tiny bit of black to that, which I don't use black too often. I use Prussian blue, but not black. But I think in this case, it could really work well here. So just the very light tip of my brush. See how that just pulls your eye in there so beautifully now believe it or not i'm going to grab a little bit of that gold and lighten it up because that gold can be pretty opaque and maybe just create a little swoosh here in there like it's picking up some light i kind of like that and it gives that feel of the vintage. And then in next to his face, I'm gonna go in with just the tip. So light pressure, resting my hand. And my hand's kind of shaky. I've been drinking coffee today, guys. I've been trying not to go to Starbucks. I wish I had, I think for Christmas, I'll tell my kids to get me Starbucks card but I'm really trying to be careful of my spending because you know I need more art supplies, right? <laughs> I'm kidding. So I created a little bit of shadow there. I just want to soften that line a little bit. And I want to have a difference in the brim and underneath the hat. So that's what I'm trying to create here is a little bit of a difference, but yet keep this side lighter than the other side. So I think that works. I'm gonna wash and rinse my brush and just pick up a little of that. Yeah, perfect. Now don't you get this feeling of, of movement and depth? Love that. Let's go ahead and go in now with his adorable little nose. I'm going to wash and rinse my brush, create a very light color of that orange. Again, if you need to test it, that's a little too light. That's about the color I want. And we're going to go in and do his nose. And I'm going to leave, use the tip of my brush I almost could have used really the six but as a matter of fact maybe i'll switch to that now and that's my six long princeton and let's go in and pick up just a tiny bit 
more orange paint. I want a real true carroty orange. Yeah. Like that. Quite liking that. But I want to leave that white spot. And then in the corner, I think what I'll do is pick up some of that brown and just do a little bit right here. There we go. And I'll just let that sit and kind of blend. I might pick up a little bit. Now I picked it all up, so I got to add it back in. There we go. Yeah, that's kind of what I was looking for. Alongside under his nose, create a little bit of depth there. And I'm going to, you don't have to do this, but I'm going to create just a tiny bit of shadow coming out from his nose. Now that's a little much. I'm going to pick some of that up. Ooh, his nose got long there, didn't it? And so see, that went a little wonky. So I'm going to try and pick some of that up. But you get what I'm going for there. I want to create a really light, light, shadowy color. Ooh-wee, guys. See, mine isn't always perfect either. But that's okay. We're just playing here. And once that dries, it'll lighten up. What I might just do is, with shadows, actually, you can kind of let them um, be a little bit um, more crisp lines. And the reason I was just um, stopping is I wanted to make sure my shadow was on the right side because I'm shadowing this side. So I thought for a second, uh-oh, I created the shadow on the wrong side, but I got it right. All right, so once that dries, I might go in with a little bit of a glaze. What I'm going to do right now is go in. I feel like I want to make this a little bit deeper, darker red. Let's see what this red is. I want to find like almost a brown red. Let's see what this red is. Maybe that one. I really kind of like, and see, I, I went to that red in the beginning and then I changed my mind. I really do kind of like that red. You know what? I'm going for it, guys. If it doesn't turn out, oh well. And I'm going to just put that glaze. Yeah, see, I, I like that. I'm glad. I kind of went with my intuition there. Sometimes you just got to do it, you know? It's just a painting, guys. You can always paint over it. Well, you can't paint over it with water colors, but you can just do another one. Yeah, I like that. And I actually like that it has those undertones of um, orange. Now, this side is supposed to be my lighter side, so I'm going to try and lift a little bit of that out. and make this side darker. Let me make sure I got the right color there, yeah. So I'll tap in with a little bit more pigment. There we go. Might even add a tiny bit of brown to that side. Yeah, there we go, see? Whew. Okay. Let's move down back down to his scarf. I feel pretty good with his face, actually. I oh, you know what? I don't he doesn't have a mouth. Uh let's see here. Let's do his mouth real quick. I'm just gonna pick up some black for that. Can't remember the story of Frosty the Snowman, but I think he I don't know what they use for his mouth. I'm just gonna make some little dots. 
You could even use the end of a Q-tip. I don't have one with me or I would use that. And there we go. Look how cute, you guys. He's so cute. Okay. Let's go ahead and do the front part of his scarf. So we're going to go in again with that glaze. And I believe we used Sienna for that glaze. My goodness, I'm kind of running out of... I definitely need to wash my palette. Woohoo! Just pick that up. That's actually on his on the snow part. <laughs> and like that. I want to leave a lot of white in the middle because I want it to have look like it's folding around. So let's go into our darker brown, which is the Van Dyke brown, and tap in while it's wet. There we go. And wash and rinse my brush. And now go in, and it's almost kind of like I'm lifting but I'm going along the edges of these hard lines and just kind of softening them with just a damp brush like that. Yeah, he's cute. And then once that dries, I'll go in with a little bit more, um, a little bit more of uh, that gold. And I'm just going in with the side of my brush, kind of adding some little swoopy doos. You can always soften that a bit if you don't like those hard lines like me. So I'm just taking a very light wash and I'm just make sure that's dry like that. And there you go. Isn't that fun? Maybe have some coming out from there, like that. And I think I'm going to actually even leave those hard lines. All right, let's go ahead onto the big part of his scarf. So I'm going to go back to that sienna color. Let's see here. We'll just put that right there. And let's color in his scarf with a wash. Picking up some water, using the tip of my brush to go in to where I need a finer line. And then the side of my brush in the larger areas, like that, okay? pick up a little bit more of that burnt sienna, just tap in, and I'm just using, ooh we didn't mean to pick that dark brown up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna try and use it since it's in there, and that works. Okay, maybe some gold, some of that yellow ochre, Wet and wet is just so fun. You can just really have a lot of fun with it. And then once that dries, I might go in and add a tiny bit more of that dark. I'm doing it a little bit right now because I want it to spread. There we go. And maybe I just have some little folds. And I love using the side of my brush because it comes, when you use the tip, it's a little bit more defined. And when I use the side of my brush, it's kind of softer. So let's go into the other side 
going in with my yellow ochre first and kind of creating a little wash and then I'm going to wet my brush and go in and kind of spread it all around. I'm leaving lots of nice white space. So wash and rinse my brush, go in, soften a few of those lines, give it a little bit of a washy look. There we go. And now let's pick up some of that brown. Might as well go for the dark brown. I did it on the other side, so got to match, right? So let's go in. We'll create a couple folds again. And then wash and rinse my brush and just with a damp brush, start kind of pulling that through. Wash and rinse your brush again if you need to. And I'm just softening lines here. Just kind of blending them out like that. I quite like that. So now we're about done. I'm not sure if I want to do his buttons brown or black. I think I'll do them a brown. And then we can always add some darker color to them right oops and i put see i put the shadow on the wrong side so watch this guys i wouldn't normally do this i'd just work with that but look i can pick it right up and let's start over and put that darker brown on the other side because my shadows are on this side so we'll start over kind of outline this use the tip of my brush there we go. This one too. So I think the big thing in watercolors, you know, just don't panic. Just learn to kind of love what you do. There we go. The damp brush, I'm just softening the lines. Yeah, I, I kind of like those buttons actually. I think what I'll do here too is go in with that dark brown. Let me see if I can find the dark brown. I think those are the colors I got that fell out and I got mixed up. Is the burnt brown is the one I'm looking for. And I'm just going to create a couple lines here to maybe show some folds. So my painting is dried a little, so I can go in and do that. See? Okay. So with our little button, I'm going to go in and let's see. We can add in, let's see, what color should I use for a button? I think I want to use a little bit of yellow ochre and maybe some of that sienna. And let's, if you think you have too much water or paint, which I had a feeling, just dab it off on your cloth. I'm really kind of liking the white space I've got in there, so I don't want to cover up too much of that. So I think that's quite nice. Last thing, oh, you know, I just noticed I didn't draw his arm. So let's draw that in there because we got a chubby little guy. So I'm going to that's his arm over there. So let's use that same blue we used before for his face and just create a little bit of that's quite dark. So I'm going to go in and pick some of that up. The damp brush because I just want a tiny bit of shadow for him on the side of his arm, like that. So I'm going back into that blue I created earlier and creating some shadows there. And then I think we could add in some shadows 
over there it's a little lighter so I don't want to add in too much shadow over there but maybe a little where I mostly want to do it is under here like that and then I'll go in and just maybe push and pull a little bit that technique I use a lot so I'm just creating some depth in here and just a little bit like under his scarf and then damp brush and pick some of that up so it just looks like a little shadow I think under here might need a little so it's a very light value guys meaning it's just a lot of water compared to pigment yet when I pick it up that doesn't mean I have a ton of water on my brush. It just means this is diluted about, this light value is diluted about 90% water to 10% pigment. And I'm gonna go in here, and I feel like I need to add a tiny bit. Ooh, see, that was a little much. So wash and rinse my brush real quick and let's just go in and pick some of that color up while it's wet. There we go. Don't really like this hard line. There. So look at those wonderful shadows we've created. Should we put some under his little cute little button? There we go. And you can soften that up too. Just wash and rinse your brush. So I think we're about done. Isn't he adorable? I hope you guys can do this. What I'll do is I'll give you the drawing I used for this. I might play a little bit more and just go in and maybe add some darker colors under his neck here. I really like creating depth in my paintings and adding dark colors and you know watercolors will dry much lighter so a lot of times you have to go in or I do and reapply now I don't like that hard line so I'm just washing and rinsing my brush and I'll just go in and just soften that edge like that and that really tucks it in now we could do that along here like that create a little bit more of that black color And then if you want to soften it up a bit, just take a damp brush and do that. I might continue to go under the rim. And it really looks like it's just tucking right in under his little snow head, right? So sometimes it's just those little tiny things that can really make a difference. I could even go in here, and I don't know if I want to use the black, but for where his ribbon is on his hat, I might just maybe mix some of that red and black. I want to find a place on my palette. My palette's getting so full. Um, let's see, let's just use this one. So I'm going to pick up some of that black and then some of that red and maybe just go in and oops, I got a little rogue hair there, guys. Go right along there. Now that really takes a steady hand. So if you don't have that, don't, this is just an extra, extra step that isn't really needed. Just those little details you can play with. 
I would like to go, I'm going to grab my six and go into, let's see, here and just, I don't want to put my hand in anything wet. Create a very thin line. You could even do this with a pen if you really wanted to. And then maybe along here. Now, if you don't like that hard line, go in, wash and rinse your brush like me. And I'm just going to go in and barely run my damp brush up along that edge. Just the tiniest bit. Okay. So I think he's adorable, you guys, and I will give you this um, drawing if you want to use it. And as well, you could put little holly in here. I mean, you could do lots of stuff. I could just keep going here, but I don't want to keep you too long on this tutorial. I'm sure you all have fun, wonderful things going on in your life. Me, I just paint. I paint, I paint, and I paint some more. So as you can see, I, I really could just keep going. So there you go, you guys. I hope you enjoyed that. And I think this will be such a cute little guy to have framed. Um, I was inspired by an old painting I saw on, uh, honestly, I don't even know where I saw it, you guys. I'm so sorry. But, um, this snowman that I saw was very vintage looking. Um, can't remember where I saw it, but I had it in my inspir uh, inspiration folder, I call it. And um, that's what kind of reminded me. And I thought, oh, I'd really like to show you guys how to paint something like that. So there you go. I will list all my supplies. Um, down below in my description. So if you're ever looking for my palette, my paper, my water well, and my brushes, that's where you're going to find them. And I hope you guys give this little guy a try. All right. We'll see you soon. Happy painting, everybody. And thank you so much for my super thanks I get now and then. Um, they may only be $1.99 and I get a percentage of that, but I save them, I add them up, and I get to buy more fun supplies for you guys. All right, I will see you soon.